How would you evaluate the performance from the offensive line? You know, it's a uh, like I always mention, right? Like the further you go on in the season, it's gonna get harder. You know, guys are gonna throw punches. We're gonna throw punches. You know, um, it just sucks that the world thinks that every game is supposed to be drastically perfect, but it's far from it. You know, um, I feel like as a whole, everybody could like could have did more. The O line, D line, ev like everybody, everybody. You know, it's a it's a group thing. So. Um, not to just like single out us, but you know, we take it personal. And whenever like you know, Josh ain't really fluid and doing his thing, you know, like we take it personal. And now we have a whole like off season to to fight that mental battle. So, Dion Josh was under pretty consistent pressure from that for, for most of that game. Uh, like talk about you know execution on the part of your team. Mm -hmm. But what were they? What was Cincinnati doing specifically? Can you kind of take us inside that maybe? Uh, Shed some light on how they were generating that. Yeah, it was just pressure, man. Just just a lot of single missiles, man. It's just guys coming from all the different angles. You know, uh, corners coming late. You know, guys were running games on the inside and outside, just just keeping us moving, just keeping us on our toes. And, and they did a good job, you know, like like I'm I'm true to it. And and they did a good job of of keeping our head on the swivel. And, you know, that's what the game plan was, obviously, and they executed. Offensively, defensively, really across the board. Does it just feel like you guys couldn't get in a rhythm today? Um, I, I think when you look at it, when you take a step back and look at it, uh, all, all three phases, um, you know, you, you, there's ebbs and flows in a game. We all had our time in the sun in regards to um, not playing complementary football, not putting our defense in an advantageous position or special teams. Or um, So he wins as a team, he loses as a team. Um, all these cliches are a lot harder when, you know, this is the conclusion of a season, conclusion of a group of guys being together that, you know, you really care for. Um, kudos to the Bengals. They played really good football. Can't take that away from them. And in the end, uh, we didn't play well enough, and that's why we're here and they're, they're going on to the next. For each of you guys, how disappointing is it, knowing the playoff losses in the past couple of years, to have this game on this day in your place? I mean, that's a um, it's a serious question. I mean, it's, it sucks, you know, it sucks. I hate to be simple or whatever, it just sucks, bro. Like, we went out there, we want to win. Like, we're here to try to win as many Super Bowl as possible. And uh, as competitors, as a job and as a, and, as a, and as a love and as a, you know, a part of like our lives, like, it sucks. And uh, we try to compete at a high level all, of the time and you know just sometimes it it gets us you know and that's the sucky part of being human but you know like the good thing is that we got each other and we win together and we lose together and truly I mean and I'm gonna speak for Mitch too and the other guys like I would do it all over again with the same group group of guys mm -hmm. like we have the best team the best coaches the, the best cafeteria people the best garbage guys, everything. Our everything is just here, man. And then, you know, like we just fell short. Just fell short today. Mitch, did it kind of seem like in those first two possessions that Cincinnati had a pulse on what you guys were doing? Um, I would say we also understood, for the most part, what their game plan was going to be. Um, you know, there's always wrinkles in that. There's always different caveats that they put on certain things. Um, I think it was all about execution. They came out and they executed at a higher level than we did. Um, you know, we kind of dipped our toe in the water and they jumped in the pool. So um, when, when you give a team like that a, uh, was it 14 nothing lead or, you know, whatever it was, um, that's an uphill battle from the jump. You know, we dug ourselves in a hole early and we understood that it was going to be a, uh, a grinder after that. and, and uh, yeah, I think to echo what Dion said, we, yeah, every every team says it's such a special group, and we've gone through so much. But um, there's just a different pulse in this building, a different pulse in this locker room, a, a different connection to the people in, in the building and outside of the building. Not only for what we've gone through, but just you know, Buffalo is such a special place. And and to kind of answer your question earlier about does it suck losing at home? in the playoffs. I mean, it sucks losing in general. It sucks in the playoffs because 
our ultimate goal is to go all the way. We, we, that's what we signed up for. We didn't sign up for just kind of collecting checks, going out there and seeing what happens. We want to execute not only for our, for the, the, you know, the organization, the, the people, but for each other. I, I think when we, when we, when the offensive line breaks the, when we receive the ball or whenever it's time to go out, we always huddle up and, and it's always the same thing, which is like, let's just one play at a time do it for each other. And, and that's what this year has been all about. And, uh, that's the toughest thing is that you know every year there's turnover. Nothing is guaranteed in this business, personnel-wise or whatnot. That group of guys went out there together for the last time, and, and that's the toughest part of this um, because, uh, like he echoed, we had a really – we only speak for certain guys, but uh, the O-line in particular felt I had a really good um, connection, and, and it's, it's a real shame that we're not going to be able to go out there together again. I don't know if, if um, sorry to answer this, but he, just his presence, I think, speaks volumes. Uh, I don't, I don't, he's not a big rah-rah guy, and um, I'm sure that at some point he's a little bit exhausted of people asking how he's doing or, or put, in, put in a position that he didn't ask to be put in. Um, his presence alone, his smile, his positive energy, which he's always had, uh, always interjects energy and, and, and good vibes with the group. It was really good to see him. I'm, I'm really happy for the fans, the crowd, uh, for, for him to be able to go out there. And, um, I, you know, he's worked very hard to get in the position he's at right now. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, and, um, guys like Tremaine Edmonds, Devin Singletary, Jordan Boyer, you know, this potentially could be their last time in the locker room with you guys. So this, you know, what are your thoughts about that business side of it, you know, being with those guys since you walked in the door? Um, the thoughts on it, it's really more so, all right? Like, those guys played, played their ass off all season long. Um, we all know that no team will be the same, and I'm pretty sure that our management will try their best to keep it the same. Um, I'm a Tremaine Edmonds fan, a Motor fan, and a Poyer fan. So I'm pulling for him. Whatever is meant to, and to come, and it'll come with all of its flowers because those guys left it all on the field all season long. Played hurt, played injured, mental game, every part of it. And uh, I could like say that for so many other guys in that in locker room too. And um, whatever's meant to come, it will come. And they'll be smiling. And uh, if it's here, if it's there, no matter where and where it is, I'm going to smile at them and I'm going to just you know, like, y'all did that, you know, but. Mitch, you talk about this being a special group. Typically in life, when you go through struggle, you just want it to come to an end. But in sports, the more struggle you go through, kind of the more you want to see it through to the end. Can, can you talk about that dynamic and how, as the struggles continue to build throughout the year, how you guys just continue to get closer and now it's all over? That's a good, that's an interesting question. Um, I would, I would say that in life, even you know your struggles, you want to end, you want them to end, but you 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 also want to learn, you want to give them their time, their, their what they're due. I would say the same thing in sport. You know, not only is everyone going through these these markers as a team, whether it's the Demar situation, the Buffalo blizzards, uh, you know, Dawson Knox or Vaughn going down, all this stuff. But each person also has their own script throughout the season that they're going through that maybe people don't know about. Um, we see each other more than our families in season. A lot of the time, we have to confide in one another, lean on each other, which is not natural for grown men to do at times. Um, but I feel like barriers are broken with, with this group in regards to being vulnerable to a certain extent. Um, it also depends on the individual. Uh, regardless of struggles or not, we want to see this through the end. Uh, it definitely stings a little bit more knowing that uh, this particular group went through so much and, uh, and this chapter is closed. So um, that's the nature of the beast and it's the, it's the poops, to be honest.